This is the first and probably the only unboxing video that we will ever do here at Sparkfun Electronics. Today we're going to be unboxing the Lulzbot Taz 4 to give you an idea of how it's packaged, what's included, and what you need to do to set it up. So let's get started and unbox the Taz 4. In the top of the box, you'll see this manual. This runs you through all the steps that I'm going to accomplish here in this little video. It tells you how to unbox it, how to take it out, how to properly set it up, and then eventually how to print your very first part. So go ahead and keep this and set this aside. First up, we've got this box here in the middle, and this is going to have all your accessories and things like that in it. So if we open it up, we can see that this is the packaging list. This is um, what Lulzbot actually uses to package everything together to make sure everything is in here. This is kind of like their QC checklist. We also see this little octopus guy. The interesting thing about Lulzbot is this was printed on this physical machine. Each one of these gets a test before it leaves the factory, and we know that this is the quality that this will print because this was printed on this machine. So that's pretty cool. In addition, we have the power cord, the USB, um, the filament guide, um, a little piece of filament just to test out, and then we have the full manual, and it's always a good idea to read the full manual, of course. It also includes a uh, micro SD card and a couple of zip ties. Next up, we've got these two little pockets right here. I'm gonna go ahead and tear that one open. This is the extruder head. So as you can see, this is just the standard extruder head. They also do have a dual extruder and a Ninja Flex head. This is just the standard head right there. You got the stepper motor, um, you've got the gear drive here on the back, and then the extruder nozzle and a little fan. And over here, we have the power supply. So this is the power supply for the whole Lulzbot. It has this nice little connector that mates to the control box. We're gonna set this aside as well. If we lift this up, you can see the entire printer down here. Um, you also see this little pouch over here. I'm gonna pull that out. Um, this is the tool bag, which has all the little pieces that you need to get everything set up. We've got a um, nice ball and um, hex set. We have a X-Acto knife, and we have some other various tools for measurement and whatnot. And in this little pouch, we also have a few more tools. So a nice little equipped tool bag is included with this printer. So you shouldn't need to buy anything else in terms of tools. So now it's time to take the printer out of the box. I'm just gonna grab it by these two rails, lift it up. Now it's just a matter of standing it up, removing that foam piece. Next thing we're gonna do is actually remove the table here. Just slide it straight up and then remove the foam from the bottom of this piece. The next thing we need to do is remove some of the protective shipping pieces. On this axis right here, you can see that there's a little foam piece that we're gonna remove off the rail, it just slides right off. There are also a couple protective pieces right here that you can see in red. These just keep um, the Z axis from sliding up and down, so we're gonna go ahead and remove those with a little wing nut here. There's two more on the other side, we're gonna undo those the same way. Now it's time to put the table into the frame. We've got four little thumb screws here that we're going to undo. Next, we wanna take this table and position it inside the frame. You want the stepper motor to be facing towards the back of the machine where all the other connectors are. And we're gonna just loosely position it over top of those four little standoffs. At this point, we're gonna take off the bubble wrap. We're also going to remove these four pieces of tape. Now we need to attach this to the frame so we can just slide this to the end. We're gonna screw these down on this side, then slide the table back and screw them in on the other side. To keep these cables out of the way, we're gonna use one of the supplied zip ties and zip tie it to the side of this rail here. Now it's time to attach the print head to the carriage. We're just gonna unscrew this one screw up top. We're gonna to take the print head and line the groove in the bottom inside the groove in the bottom of the carriage. Let's just slide it down in place like that. And then you see these two holes up top line up. We're gonna use the two and a half millimeter hex wrench to tighten down the screw. The next step is to connect all these wires together. They're all coded so it's pretty easy to connect them up in the right way. 
Now on the back side, it's time to connect all these different wire assemblies into the main controller. The manual labels these, but the top one is the XZ connector, then we have the YZ connector, then we have the heater bed, and then we have the power supply. We're gonna flip it around to the front, and now we just need to take off the final piece of tape and attach the filament guide. The filament guide snaps in right there and directs the filament into the printer head so that when you have your spool attached, it just gives it a nice line of shot over to the print head. So all we're gonna do is just snap that in place like that, and then this will eventually just sit like that. Now that we have the printer out of the box and all assembled, uh, the only thing left to do before we can do our first print is to level the print bed so that we know we have a, a nice flat print surface uh, and we don't end up with a wonky model. And then to uh, make sure that the temperature is properly adjusted for the type of filament that we're going to print. So I'm going to go ahead and start the bed leveling procedure, which is basically just using this piece of paper as a thickness guide to home the z-axis uh, down to the print bed. And then I'm going to move that around. I'm going to move the X and Y axis, keeping the Z in the same place and moving the paper under the print head to make sure that I have the same thickness between the Z stop and the print surface all the way around the bed. If I don't, then I can level it out using these adjustment screws on the corners and a two and a half millimeter hex key. In order to move the head around on the printer to do the bed leveling procedure, uh, you're going to want to connect the printer to your computer and download the Print Run software, which you can find on the LulzBot website at lulzbot.com, as well as the product page for this printer. Uh, once you've downloaded that software, you simply connect the printer, install the drivers, and then pull up the software, and it has an interface that allows you to move the head back and forth uh, by different increments, as well as click the home button, and it will move to the home position of each of the axes. That's gonna come in handy when you need to adjust the home stops before you can level the bed. So now that the bed is level, we are ready to go ahead and load our filament and set the appropriate temperature for both the nozzle and the print surface. So we're looking at the main uh, screen for the printer here, and I'm just gonna click the wheel and go down to control, and then temperature, and this is where we'll set our temperature. Uh, this is actually already set for ABS plastic, which is the type of filament that I have in there now. You can see the nozzle is set for 230, and the print bed is set for 85. So. Um, that's good to go. So that means that we can go ahead and pull this out and up to release the idler assembly and pull out this piece of ABS uh, that's in the extruder when it ships. And now we'll take our reel and pull the filament free and push it through our filament feed tube. And the feed tube will just keep the filament from curling up on itself and ending up in parts of the printer where you don't want it. And feed the end of the filament down past the idler wheel into the feed hole. And then we simply move the idler assembly back into place and clip that back down where it was. And we are ready for a test print. <laughs> 